Hey everyone, I'm Insetic, and welcome to Freak Out Extreme Free Ride. And with me on this first video, I have Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? So yeah, with uh, winter in the rearview mirror, spring right in the middle, I decided it's time to do another snow game. So Freak Out Extreme Free Ride is a skiing game that, if you're wondering, what is this? I've never heard of this before, or maybe you saw it and wondered what it was. Originally, this game was released in the PAL region in 2007 for PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, and PC. But then THQ Nordic has brought it forward, and you can now buy this on Steam for, I believe, $10 normally. What? Oh, 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 oh. Mm, what? That's not normal age, my dude. <laughs> hey, man, we're, we're really fresh onto the slopes. Oh, that's where you're from, okay. That's in Sedicville, yeah. Uh, so, this game expects to be played with a mouse and keyboard, but I, you know, I, I think, like, extreme sports games just play so much better with a controller, so I did configure a an Xbox One controller to, you know, be the, be the device I use to play this game. Okay. And so I, you know, I'm just kind of full disclosure, I mapped all the buttons to that, and and yeah. Even though it's one of those where, even though it says it's not fully supported, you, it you, works you, fine. Yeah, you just set it up in Steam. So yeah, you can, uh, we're just going to start, start a new uh, character. You saw some options for the characters, and they really only differed in that each one would have, uh, you know, one point already in trick or balance or endurance. Uh, three male riders, three female riders, and yeah, that was really the only difference. Uh, so we're gonna go to Broken Back Mountain, and we're gonna go to the first place, Frozen Creek. So how extreme is this game? Uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty extreme. Yeah, yeah. You is know, it actually extreme, or does it want to be extreme? It, uh, it wants to be extreme. That's kind of the vibe I got, because, like... You see the, yeah. Yeah, the okay. little pictures of the people that are like, Whoa! Stylized, yeah. except, like, everything else seems pretty... Yeah, like, fun. uh, you saw the aesthetic is kind of that notebook sketchy kind of style yeah. that, uh, SSX on tour kind of popularized. If you think about it, on tour did that, and then amped three had sort of that aesthetic That's true, yeah. and this game also has that sort of aesthetic i'm not sure on tour did did popularize it i think it was kind of in the in the cultural lexicon already right like it was it, it was right around the time when the the I, I don't know what year did this come out uh this came out in 2007 yeah so in 07 what grade would we have been in? Because we're, <laughs> no. you know, our age group was like the target audience yeah. for this kind of thing. And so, like, you know, yeah, yeah. we were in, like, what, uh, middle school? Yeah. Like, late yeah. middle school, high school? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember Halo 3 came out freshman year of high school. First. Right. Uh, and that was 2007. Right. So, like, so, like, yeah. this was, that was, like, the thing. The, mm -hmm. like, sort of... Uh, notebook sketch right art style right so here's kind of how the levels are broken up you start out in them and you see a whole bunch of challenges available for you to go hit whichever ones you want and uh, they're kind of broken up by color so if you see uh, like a green challenge that's a collectible challenge or if you see that kind of green challenge this is a gap challenge which if you keep tutorial mode on, the game will stop you right before you go over, like, every jump. That's to, fucking uh, annoying. That's really, to, really To remind annoying. you it is. So, turn tutorial mode off. I'll, you know what, I'll just, you know, I'll be here to tell you what all of these are. Like, you see a, a red challenge coming up. Red is a rail challenge. So you will want to grind some rails. This, this one is three rails in succession. And these are the worst. Uh, don't really bother with the rail challenges unless necessary. Because <laughs> okay. y y the, your character's momentum rarely lines up right. It, it either is so easy that anyone could do it, or your character's momentum doesn't really line up right. Um, so yeah, basically, 
than the controls. So you're always riding down forward. You're always riding down the mountain. Mm-hmm. And um, you can press a button. I don't remember what, you know, the keys correspond to because in my head they're, you know, controller buttons off an Xbox One controller. Right. But you can press and hold A button to basically carve, you know, turn and turn more sharply and slow yourself down. So if you see me kind of turn back and forth and back and forth, that's kind of how you slow down in this game. Okay. Um, and then in the air, you have uh, some grabs. You have your ski grab or your special grab or your other grab. And note, I'm not saying like variants of them. Like literally you have three buttons that do different grabs and that's all you have. <laughs> like, Hooray! But yeah, yeah. Like, but uh, where you'll see crazy stuff happen is that, of course, you can do spins, you can do backflips, front flips, and you can also do barrel rolls. That's something that, you know, you can't do in most games. Mm-hmm. So you'll see uh, some crazy spin-flip combinations going down as uh, as all of your axes are used. Was that a dogger you passed? Yes, yes. So... On every one of these mountains, there will be the different types of challenges strewn about, but on every one of them, there will also be a basically collectibles challenge to find the five dogs. I mean, I love dogs, but that is really annoying. Yeah. Along with, like, every uh, every of these mountains will have complete this many challenges of any type, or complete this many challenges of a certain type, and then a couple high score challenges. You know, I've, I only vaguely remember this game from when you streamed it. Mm-hmm. And one thing I do remember is that Three Feet Smaller did, like, half the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to look up and notice a lot of songs by a band called Three Feet Smaller. I swear to God, they do, like, eight out of ten songs that can play yeah, in this game. I don't... I've never, I've never heard of them before. I don't know if they're, like, small or maybe... You know, your audience might actually have some people who have heard of them. I maybe. I, I think I looked them up and like they were super obscure. Like maybe we should I ask Ubis if, they, if he knows. Yeah, yeah. Ubis will be like, "Oh, three feet smaller, my favorite band." Yeah. I own all their albums and am the lead singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So music-wise, just since we're on that subject, when you're in the lodge, there's actually some pretty nice kind of laid-back acoustic tracks uh-huh. that, of course, don't play during gameplay. Instead, during gameplay, it's this mix of, like, eight three feet smaller tracks and then, like, one kind of more electronica track by <sighs> someone, some other band, one more kind of indie track by some other band, and then the three feet smaller starts repeating. So, Good. Um, and also, for these, I will always dedicate one run to picking up all of the collectibles, or at least dedicate a segment if, mm. for example, you can't get them all in one run. Yeah. Because um, pretty much as soon as you collect one of them, it counts up towards your, you know, blank out of five. And So if you so, got a couple in one run and a couple in another, it'll add up. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other main thing is you might have seen my landing bonuses when I do land. Um and you might have seen several different... Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> oh, well, there are ragdolls. Oh, well, you know, you're fine. Huh? Yeah, there are there are ragdolls, so that can make for some entertainment. So basically, you'll see a bunch of landing bonuses, and if you get, like, a perfect landing, it's worth 1.3 times. Or I think if it was a perfect switch landing, it was worth double. But oh. mostly, what you'll see is either repetitive which gives you a 0.5 times multiplier, or a sketchy landing, which also halves your points. So, And that's what you see most of the time? Um, quite often. Quite often. Huh. It's, it's, it's tough in this game to get a very good landing. And actually, so the jump challenges at the start of the game, when you don't really have a lot of trick stats, that's actually kind of when it's toughest. Because once you have a whole ton of trick stats and you bust out like a... 10x backflip, 5x uh, barrel roll, 1800 with a grab. Like you saw in my stream, you get like a million points in a jump 
who cares if your score gets cut down by half and then cut down by half again? Yeah. When you only needed 50,000 points, that'll get you there. So, yeah, this game, the, the scores you get are really all or nothing. Either you uh, get some bad multipliers and lose a lot of your score, or you do something crazy and land it well and get so many points. Huh. It's honestly kind of weird how loose it is. <laughs> you know, like, with regards to spinning and barrel rolling and flipping and all of that. Yeah. So it looks like, you know, you can just go hit start and hit restart. It'll save your progress. It's not like you have to get to the bottom of the mountain even. Right. That's, that's pretty nice, I guess. Right. Quality of life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember we were having some trouble finding good things to say about this game when we <laughs> when we streamed it because not because the game is just atrocious, but uh, you know it it just seems kind of generic. Yeah. Yeah. I and, mean, you know, out of all the things you can say, there's good stuff, there's bad stuff, there's generic stuff, and yeah. Uh, of course, I. You know, in the first video, I try to give an overall of it and right. try not to, you know, completely bag on it. But yeah, what I can say of this game is that it is a hidden game, not even a hidden gem. Just, you probably haven't heard of this before. Like I said, it's worth $10 regular on Steam. Uh, if you think it's worth giving a shot, then pick it up. Yeah, or, maybe if you're like a real... Ski head, as they call yeah, them, or, or maybe it'll go on sale. I don't know. Maybe, you know, there will be a THQ Nordic sale or something where yeah. um, it'll be on sale. You know, I kind of equate like a dollar to an hour of gameplay. Yeah. And across playing this like the first time, and then you know replaying while recording. Yeah, I think I've gotten about ten hours. Mm. You know, the, the initial stream. Continuing on with that character, uh, kind of continuing on with a backup character, and then doing a recorded playthrough. Well, you you got ten hours of gameplay out of it. Do you think you got ten hours of value out of it? <laughs> I I mean, you know, like there's a big difference. I can spend thirty hours playing a game that I only spent a dollar on, but if I hate every minute of it, that's still not worth my money. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, mm. You know, it's kind of like, I'd say it's kind of like the Amped oh. series. This game is the best when you're just riding around and there's a lot of, like, jump challenges or gap challenges and you can just do crazy stuff. Because as the levels go on, there start to be, like, 30, 40 uh, jump challenges in a level. Wow! Yeah, yeah. They start to get, they, the, the levels do start to get bigger. And it you, you're just... You know, having fun, and then when you need to do precise stuff like the pickup challenges, or especially those rail challenges, yeah, that's that's when the game gets tough. Un unlike uh, our qualms with the Amp series, you're mostly not required to do these kinds of challenges that are super tough. Hmm. Um, you know, doing rail challenges or pickup challenges will add to do X challenges of any type will add to that goal. And there will be levels where you do need to do, you know, four rail challenges as one of the goals. But, like, you can perfectly just... If a certain pickup challenge is pissing you off, if a certain rail challenge is pissing you off, just ignore it. There's really no impetus to 100% this game. Hmm. <laughs> um... I do remember when we were doing, or when we, when you were playing the game on stream, I mentioned before, and I, I stand by, the snow in this game looks really good, actually. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the trails that you leave behind look cool, you know, the, the smoke effects, they look pretty good, especially for their time. And then the, uh, the little sparkles you see ahead of you, mm -hmm. that's a very nice touch. Um... You know, like, uh, that remind it, it does look like how fresh snow on the ground kind of sparkles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I just wish it was snowing here. It's a fairly pleasing game. I mean, uh, yeah, visually. It's, it's made by this point. Yeah, vi visually pleasing. Yeah. yeah. It's not ugly. Yeah, and then if you're the world's biggest three feet smaller fan, it can also be audi audioly oh, appeasing. Oh, yeah. Appeasing. Auditorially? Yeah, I, uh... Audit... 
I'm not sure what the word would be. Yeah, but you might have noticed, so I've played for like 20 minutes, you know, cut out some some footage of additional runs down, and it was three feet smaller that entire way. Yeah. Okay, so you notice I completed the top goals, mm -hmm. which were all, uh, you know, the high scores or do this many of a certain type of challenge or find the dogs. And that's basically what I will complete, because it seems like that's about as many as you need to complete to move on. Mm. Like, actually doing all the jump challenges, actually doing all the rail challenges, all the pickups, is again, kind of additional. You know, we'll get you more money, mm. and might get you some more unlockables, but aren't necessary for progression. Now, what is necessary for progression, once you've done enough of a, uh, you know, the goals on the free ride part of a level, is to then do kind of the race down it. And uh, this was kind of odd, you know, it, it kind of confused us in the stream. Yeah. Because, you know, there's no, it's just you in the mountain and that timer, that flaming timer. And then also some... Uh, and three feet smaller. And three feet smaller, of course. And then also some dials. That flow dial, which actually was there in the, uh, you know, regular version of the level. It would basically give you a bit more of a combo. And now a risk dial. That, um, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, in the regular version of the level, the flow dial didn't have two arrows on it. Right. Um, and I remember asking you... What does that mean? What do you know? And at the time, you didn't know. Do you have any answers about what the... the yes, I have answers for the risk dial and the flow dial now. So you know what the two arrows signify? Correct. Interesting. Okay. What okay. is it? So, for example, risk, you see a red, red arrow. Flow, you see a green arrow. That is basically your average. That is basically... You know what? What you uh, what what value you have then after all of the fluctuations? Because you'd see the black dials would uh, rise up or fall back or rise up or fall again. Uh huh. You know, like maybe you're flowing really well and then you crash and you lose your flow and then you get some flow back. Uh, well, that green dial, that so green that's arrow, average over the entire run so far. That that green arrow might might fall back a little bit before rising again. Think of it as, like, the score you're going to get. So, huh. for those, not only do you want to go fast, but you want to get your dials up. You want to get those values up. And for risk, do some tricks, uh, ride close to some ob obstacles, flow, basically stay at a high speed. Don't, you know, have too many moments where you stumble or slow down. And actually, at the start, it's pretty okay to get through those, but those events will very quickly start being very tough. Huh. Very tough. Being, like, gatekeepers, basically, to, to more content. So that was the first area of Broken Back Mountain, and next video we will head to the second area and see what the rest of that mountain range has in store for us.